So um, it's been a bit more than a decade since we can quantify the expression of genes in a variety of cell types. We also know that changes in gene expression can create a cascade of events that uh, can affect biological processes. It can, for example, lead to tumor genesis, but in a more positive way, it can also prepare cells for a differentiation. Some of these processes are already uh, well studied in specific cell types, like in blood cells, because it's quite easier to, to collect. But if we want to further understand these processes in other cell types, we need to identify the genes that have a characteristic expression in specific cell types and specific lineages. So we uh, developed a tool for cell lineage analysis, uh, which contains a feature selection method that identify the most relevant genes between uh, two cell types. Uh, we developed a method for comparing uh, cell types from large collection of transcriptomic data sets. And then we also implemented a web application to make the results uh, available to the public, to share them easily, explore the results, and also show the results in a lineage context. And I will uh, get back to that a bit later. So the base method for feature selection is uh, based on a random forest for, classific for binary classification. Uh, the input data is an expression, uh, a gene expression matrix with samples from two different cell types shown in red and yellow here. We use this input data as, uh, to uh, create, generate an ensemble of decision trees where each tree is built separately with a random selection of the input samples here. At each decision point, we uh, evaluate a couple of randomly selected genes, and we select the one that separates, that discriminates the most between uh, the two samples. After that, after we select the gene, we split the input data set into two groups, one group that go down in one branch, another group that goes to another branch, and we repeat the same process until uh, all the samples in the branch are from the same uh, lineage. So this approach is uh, common in a classification for classification tasks, but here we are really interested in, in the feature selection approach, which means we want to evaluate how well each gene is discriminating between samples um, as we are building all these, these decision trees. And Random Forest has um, a metric for that, it is scoring all the genes with what is called the feature uh, importance. Uh, so that is uh, for classic random forest, but we, what we did is that we added a regularization layer that uh, at each selection, uh, each decision point, um, select the genes that are better than the genes that were seen before always. And this, what it does is that it somewhat implements uh, a memory for the random forest and it allows to um, reduce the number of genes that are selected while we are building uh, these trees. Another modification uh, that we add to the base random forest is uh, on uh, the bootstrap. Um, so instead of randomly selecting samples to create our decision trees, uh, which is known to create, uh, to introduce bias when the samples are uh, unbalanced, in this case, for example, where in, for example, B cells, are overrepresented. Uh, so what we do to uh, remove the bias, reduce the bias, is to we create each tree with a stratified bootstrap approach, which um, select the same number of samples from each class to create um, every single tree. So we apply this method onto uh, the Phantom 5 um, gene uh, Phantom 5 data set, which contains gene expression measurement for um, a lot of uh, primary cells and cell lineage, it's about a thousand. And um, we use only the transcription factor data set, which has uh, about 1,500 genes. Um, and we use this data set because it's, it, it contains, it, um, all the samples were manually curated, such that all samples are associated with a cell type from the cell ontology. So if you're not familiar with the cell ontology, it is basically a structure that describes the relationship between cell types in the whole cell lineage. So what I'm showing here is an example of uh, the cell ontology for the hematopoietic cell, which is um, responsible for the formation and development of blood cell. 
And uh, the thick arrows represent is a relationship between these two cell types, such that leukocyte is a hematopoietic cell, blood site is also an hematopoietic cell. And down the trees, you have, uh, down the tree, you have uh, an association between cell types, cell ontology term from the cell ontology, and phantom five samples that are representing here in green. So as you see, some of the cell ontology terms are not associated with any samples. And what we did is that we, we took advantage of the Yankee information encoded in the cell ontology tree um, to associate each cell ontology term to a set of samples. And we define it as the leukocyte samples as a combination of the samples from its children. So in this case, dendritic cells and myeloid leukocytes. And we do that for all the cell ontology term. Um, so here we look at an example of how do we compare dendritic cells, how do we find cell-specific dendritic cell, dendritic-specific uh, genes um, to other cell types. So what we do is that we first identify the parents of dendritic cells. And because they share samples, they have samples in common, we exclude it and we compare dendritic cells to everything else, which is, in short, comparing dendritic cells to all its cousins in the, the cell ontology. Um, so for each pair of, uh, for each comparison, we compare a pair of cell type, so dendritic cell versus its cousins, so in this case, it's myeloid leukocytes, and we run our random forest method, we find the genes that discriminate between the two cell types, and we look at the expression value of this gene, if it is higher in dendritic cells, we assign the label up. If it's lower in dendritic cells, we assign the label down. We repeat this process for all the cousins of dendritic cells. So we fill up this table, and we define what we call a lineage score, in this case for dendritic cells, which is basically the number of times a gene is uh, assigned the label up, and the number of times that the gene was assigned uh, the label down. So, um, to validate these results, we, uh, so we perform this analysis on 70 different cell ontology terms from the cell ontology, and validating these results is a bit tricky. So, what we did to validate some of our results, we look in the literature at genes that are lineage, known to be lineage specific. So, we found the um, SPI1 gene that plays a broad range of role in hematopoiesis. It is a master regulator of dendritic cells and B cells. And it is also involved in the uh, differentiation uh, pathways in uh, hematopoietes. We expect to find this gene highly expressed in monocyte cells and um, lowly expressed in T cells. So we look at uh, the website that we generated to summarize our results. We look at the gene count for SPI1. What you see here is a list of all the cell ontology terms in which uh, SPI1 was found as uh, important in the, in the random forest, during the random forest comparison. And, what you, and they are ranked by lineage score here. So what you can read is that SPI1 was selected 57 times in comparisons that involve CD14 positive, CD16 negative classical monocytes. Um, and it is always upregulated because it shows it is shown here in, in red. Uh, we um, design a, um, a lineage visualization, uh, so here I'm showing only the microprotein cell, to summarize all the results that I, I showed before for the SPI1 gene. Uh, and we represent here in red is the number of time that SPI1 was found up in, um, in the in, uh, hematopoietic cell comparisons, for example. So what you can see first is that for the majority of the hematopoietic cell, SPI1 is mainly found as uh, upregulated, except for the T cell, which, which confirms what is known from uh, the literature. Um, if we zoom out and look at the whole cell ontology, we can confirm that this gene is only, almost exclusively expressed in the hematopoietic cell lineage and not uh, anywhere else. So we can conclude that we basically identified that this gene was specific to this cell type and to this lineage, and uh, we confirmed that uh, with uh, the literature. So to conclude, 
we developed a supervised machine learning method uh, to identify a set of genes that discriminate between samples. We apply this method to the phantom type transcription factor data sets and retrieve genes that are specific to the hematopoietic cell lineage, so SPI1 in particular. And we develop tools to share, explore, and visualize the results in a uh, lineage context. For the uh, future direction for this project, uh, we are looking to uh, validate, to make a thorough validation of <coughs> the, the cell type specific genes that we identify. Uh, we want to do some enrichment analysis of this set of genes. We want to uh, extend this method to other data sets, so not only transcription factor, but long non coding RNA, enhancer data set, for example. Um, and uh, we also want to try to expand this approach to other data set, not only uh, Phantom 5, but uh, other public data set like GTEx, or also other gene sets like uh, cluster differentiation genes, for example. So I would like to thank uh, my supervisor, Michael Hoffman, and my colleague, colleagues, as well as uh, the collaborator from the Phantom 5 project that have designing uh, some of the visualization in the, in the project. Uh, and thanks for your attention. If you have questions.